Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Achari Kirk. Hello. We're looking at Transformers Dark of the Moon Pitch Meeting by Screen Rant. Thank you, Screen Rant, for allowing us to react to this. Very much appreciate it. Y'all, if you haven't already, check out Ryan George's interview on this channel. It's a lovely interview. Y'all will love it because it's lovely. If you haven't already subscribed to Screen Rant, there's a link in the description below. You can click on that and give the original video an upvote and subscribe to them there. And uh, let them know that Jabby sent you, if you could be so kind. Also, vote this video up. Let's YouTube know that you enjoy what you're watching. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be, I suppose. I forgot to mention one thing. Achara's never seen Transformers Dark of the Moon. If you've seen two Transformers films, really, haven't you seen them all? I guess so. I mean, there's not much variation between them. It's just a lot of nonsense. I've seen the first one and the second one. So, yeah. I had a hard time getting through the third one. This was a brutal movie to get through for me. It was just like, oh, it was exhausting. I enjoyed the one with Mark Wahlberg and um, what's his name from The Devil Wears Prada. Stanley Tucci. Stanley Tucci. He was in a Transformers movie. Oh. Whichever one that was, I believe that was him. It was with Mark Wahlberg. That was fun. I remember one and two fairly well. I'm not sure if I watched any more and just decided that it was so traumatic that I needed to scrub it from my memory banks because I can't remember. Yeah. Well, without Transformers 2, there's no Jeremy Johns. So, you know, bad movies provide good things sometimes. So, you have a new Transformers movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Now, I should tell you, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to use Megan Fox in this one because of we fired her. No problem, <laughs> sir. We'll just say that Sam Witwicky has a new girlfriend. Fantastic. Now, let me ask you something. Is she a supermodel? Well, see, sir, Sam Witwicky as a character is a constantly screamy and whiny and sweaty guy, right? So, of course she's a supermodel. Good. Of course she is. That makes complete sense sense to me. And this one's name is Carly and she also supports him financially and lets him live in her awesome apartment because he can't find a job. Oh, he can't? He can't, sir. And we're going to spend God. a bunch of the movie following him as he tries to find a job. That does sound like the kind of thing people want to see in a Transformers movie. Unsuccessful job interviews, I agree. And speaking of things people definitely want to see in a Transformers movie, Sam's parents are going to be back. Oh boy, so what are they going to do? <laughs> well, they're going to be comic relief. Comic relief is very important. I agree. That's why 95% of the other characters will also be comic relief. Sounds like a good strategy. So anyway, Sam can't get hired anywhere, even though he got a medal from the president. <laughs> yeah, isn't he super famous from saving the world several times? You'd think so, but no, everybody seems to have forgotten that. Well, okay then. So is there any Transformers stuff going on in the movie, or is it all just job interviews? Oh, there's some Transformers <laughs> stuff, sir. Oh boy. So we're gonna say that the meltdown at Chernobyl was actually because some human scientists were messing with some stuff they found on an Autobot spaceship. Oh, so the worst nuclear disaster in history was caused by Hasbro products? I certainly wouldn't phrase it that way to the investors, sir, but yeah. Oh, okay. And so this spaceship crash landed on the moon in the 1960s, and we're gonna say that's actually why the U.S. sent people up there. So what's up with this spaceship? Well, see, Sentinel Prime, the old leader of the Autobots, was on it with something they could use to win the war, but he was shot down by Decepticons. Uh-oh. Yeah, and later in the movie, there's gonna be this plot twist where you find out he was actually working with the Decepticons. So why'd they shoot him down if they were working together? <laughs> Unclear. So anyway, Optimus revives Sentinel, and then he offers him the Matrix of Leadership. But Sentinel's like, no, 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 you keep that. If he's secretly evil, shouldn't he accept the super powerful object? Like, that would come in handy for his plan, right? Well, sir, this happens before we find out about the plot twist. Right. Shouldn't the plot connect with the upcoming twist, though? No, I think it's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, Sam eventually does get a job, but this guy, Jerry Wang, tells him all about the spaceship on the moon, but then he's gonna to get killed by a Decepticon. Oh, how come? Well, see, the Decepticons have decided to kill all their human collaborators, so they make it seem like he killed himself. Very sneaky. Right? And then the Decepticon's just gonna go crazy in the office, shooting everything. Well, why'd he make it look like that guy killed himself if he was about to go crazy anyway? Unclear. Huh. So then Sam <laughs> ends up working with the government, who don't really seem to know who he is. Well, he's the guy who very publicly helped save the world from Decepticons several times. Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell for these people, <laughs> so then we're gonna <laughs> reveal that Sentinel is evil and he brings a bunch of Decepticons down to Earth from the moon. Uh-oh. So then the Decepticons make a deal with the humans. They're like, if you guys exile the Autobots, there won't be a war. I mean, surely the government won't trust that deal, right? Well, why wouldn't they? Well, 
They're called the Decepticons. <laughs> right. See, they don't make that connection, so then they get deceived. Oh, uh, whoops. Whoopsie. So then we're going to find out that Sam's girlfriend's boss is also a bad guy. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, he's this super rich guy, Dylan, and he actually hired Sam's girlfriend as a way to get to Sam, and he's been working with the Decepticons all along. Why not just hire Sam? He was actively looking for employment, right? Right, but we need a reason for the girlfriend character to be in the movie. I guess that makes sense. Didn't you say the Decepticons were killing all their human collaborators, though? I did say that. So why not this guy? Well, sir, it's as they say, you know, inconsistency is key to success. Oh, that's not the expression. <laughs> well, so anyway, what yeah. are the Decepticons planning exactly? Oh, well, first of all, they want to make sure the Autobots aren't coming back, right? So they kind of strap an explosive watch onto Sam's wrist. And they send him to go see Optimus for information. Exactly. But so Optimus is like, we don't have a plan. We're just letting the humans put us on a ship and we're going to leave. Okay. And then as they're taking off, the Decepticons blow the ship up. Oh, no. So then since Sam could and get any information, they just kind of take that watch off of him. Wait, this guy's been personally involved in taking down Decepticons twice. Why would they let him live? Oh, because he's the main character. So, okay, I gotta <laughs> pause for a second. Like, I've watched this movie and I'm lost. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I, I'm so much happier that I'm watching this pitch. No, yeah, yeah, of course. Than having sat through no this doubt. movie for real. But I just remember <laughs> that moment with the spaceship being complete and total exhaustion for me, where I'm just like, Ugh. Is this still going? This movie's so long. God. I checked out. I don't remember the film all that well. I just remember that experience of there's this spaceship sequence and I'm tired as hell. This was like years ago when the film first came out, obviously, so. Right, of course. So then Decepticons start destroying Chicago and killing a bunch of people. It's gonna be nuts. Why are they doing that? Well, they wanna activate these devices to make a big wormhole that'll make planet Cybertron appear in Earth's atmosphere. What? And then they could use all the humans <laughs> as slaves. So what's the point of destroying Chicago? It's gonna look awesome. Wouldn't a planet appearing in our orbit throw off our gravity or something terrible right? like that? Actually, not even a little. Uh, learning about science is <laughs> so now stuff's looking really bad, right? People are dying. Sam's girlfriend got kidnapped by her boss. Man, it's gonna be tough for the humans to fight back, huh? Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, it turns out the Autobots weren't actually on the exploding ship. It was part of their plan the whole time. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, see, they wanted the humans to understand that the Decepticons are evil, so they pretended to leave only to swoop in and help now. So they let thousands of humans be killed just to be able to say, I told you so? Yeah, Pretty much, Jesus. yeah. Jeez. So then, boom, <laughs> pow, 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 pow. Nice. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, keep telling me about that stuff. I want to know more about that. And then... An explosion. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> and so eventually Optimus is fighting Sentinel and he's losing. But then Megatron swoops in and kicks Sentinel's butt because he wants to be in charge. Oh. And then Megatron turns to Optimus like, you know, what would you be without me? It's true, they do have a kind of dynamic. And then Optimus is like, time to find out. And he rips Megatron's head and spine out. Oh my God. And then Sentinel's on the ground begging for his life. So Optimus shoots his head off point blank and executes him. Oh. Hey, so Optimus is kind of a psychopath, huh? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, for sure. So that's about it. What do you think? Oh, I mean, it sounds like a Transformers movie, you know? It is. Yeah, and it sounds like a nice way to wrap up the trilogy, you know? Close the book on these Transformers movies. Yeah, it might be time to say goodbye now. Yeah. Although they do make a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Um, But the last one wasn't that bad, right? The last one was fun, the Bumblebee. Bum oh yeah, Bumble I like. Bumblebee Tuna. I like Bumblebee. Yeah, Bumblebee, Bumblebee was, was fun. cute. Yeah, it was a fun film. Yeah, I forgot. It was a little bit but, more heartwarming. Yeah, that was like way more heartwarming than this. More personal. Whatever this is, like as I said when we paused the thing, I'm so glad I didn't watch the movie. I feel like this explanation probably made way more sense than the movie and was like way more entertaining. I'm not gonna disagree with you. This was way more like comprehensible than the film. But I was still lost. I'm like, wait, I don't understand. Like, he's explaining it and trying to make sense of it in this this pitch meeting sort of way. And I'm still, like, not following anything. I'm like, this is so nonsensical. I can't believe this got passed, you know. Because it makes money. That's why. It's it, like he said, you know, he called it out. There was the so. biggest litmus test of it really doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the, the. Well, the best part was when he just went. Pew, 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 boom, 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 right. boom, explosion. And it's like, well, 
Yeah, that's pretty much why you go there, right? Yeah, the first one was fun though. I liked, I really enjoyed the first one. Then yeah. the second one, I, I kind of started going, oh no. And then when the third one came out, I was like, I think I'm done. I'm out. And then Bumblebee came and I was like, okay. Oh, well, they got another one coming. That's why they did this pitch meeting. They got one more coming next year, and who knows about after that. But, you know, if it's at least as good as Bumblebee, I'll check it out, you know? It'll... Yeah, I mean, I'll keep an open mind. Maybe maybe they'll do better this time. It's beasts, right? They've got animals. I like animals. Directed by Stephen Capel Jr. I don't know who that is, but it's produced by Michael Bay. You know what, though? These movies always have a really good cast. <laughs> Stephen Capel Jr. looks so much like Michael Ely. It's trippy. I'm looking at his uh, IMDb right now. He did Creed 2. Okay. He directed Creed 2. I did not like Creed 2. I know. <laughs> a lot of people like Creed 2. We did not, though. I, I did not like Creed 2. Okay. Well, he doesn't have a whole bunch of film credits. It's interesting that he's the one who's chosen for Transformers Rise of the Beast. Every time I see something like that, what it says to me is he's directing traffic. You know, you get these big, big tentpole projects and you get these smaller directors because then the producers can control him. The studio can control him and say, this is what you're doing, basically. You know, you can you do a little creative thing here and there, but like, this is what we're doing. Right. And the director's like, okay, fine. <laughs> I'll gets, do it. He gets to attach his name to a big project. And the studio gets to say, oh, we're legitimate because we have this director. Anyway, uh, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you, Screen Rant, for allowing us to react to this. I'm Jabby Coy. This is... Achara Kirk. Peace out.